All right, this bunny print is finishing up. And as you can tell, this faceted model looks excellent. And uh, we've got some really good print quality coming off of this Cheaty X Plus 3. Welcome to another episode of Nathan Builds Robots. Today we're going to be looking at the Cheaty Tech X Plus 3. This is a new fully enclosed Core XY printer from Cheaty that's designed to compete with the likes of the Creality K1, the Bamboo Lab P1S, and the Creality K1 Max. This is fitting right into that $500 to $1,000 price range. But we'll see how it compares to this competitive landscape of enclosed Core XY printers. And hopefully by the end of this video, you'll be able to know whether this printer is right for you. All of these printers on the table with me right now have roughly the same feature set. Enclosed Core XY high-speed printers in that $500 to $1,000 price range. However, what sets them apart is the size. So starting with the smallest one on display here, we have the Creality K1, that's 220 by 220. That's the exact same size as an Ender 3. The Bamboo Lab P1S is 256 by 256. It's a really good medium size printer that you'll be able to fit most projects onto. Then stepping up to this Cheaty Tech X Plus 3, this is a 275 by 275 build area. So again, it's just one small step larger. And then the biggest one on the table here is the Creality K1 Max. This is a 300 by 300 build area printer. Most people would consider this a pretty large build volume. I think this 300 millimeters cubed build area is kind of the sweet spot for a large sized printer. Now, despite having a smaller build volume than the K1 Max over here, this X Plus 3 actually is larger in terms of its overall size. And that's because Cheaty Tech has not been quite as efficient with the packaging of their printer. It's less than two centimeters larger in build volume than this P1S. However, if you look at the overall size of this thing, it's pretty bulky. And that's one of the downsides of this design. It's kind of got these plasticky feeling panels and overall it's not the most efficiently constructed design. When you look at all the other competitors in this price range, they're much more efficient. And that makes the difference of being able to fit three of these K1 Maxes on the table and only really being able to fit two of these X plus threes. Also, of the competitors on this table, I think this one objectively looks the worst. This printer has a cheaper, more plasticky feel than its competitors. You've got these big plastic side panels. You've got a injection molded clear front here. This is made out of plastic, so it could get scuffed up relatively easily. Versus on the K1 printers and on the Bamboo Lab printers, they're all using glass front panels because that's where you're gonna look at the print and see how it's going. The other thing is when you're actually running a print, you've got this gigantic bezel up top that's kind of blocking you from being able to see what's going on. On the X Max, you've got this nice clean panoramic view of what's happening. Same thing on this Bamboo Lab P1S, you've got a relatively good view in there. Also, all of these printers come with cameras. This one yeah, it does not come with a camera and uh, it comes with a light. So really similar feature set on all these printers. This one is just the least inspiring of the bunch. However, when it comes to the important stuff like print speed and print quality, this printer really keeps up with the competition. This is actually a 14 minute Benchy. That's extremely fast. I think that's actually faster than the other printers on the table. However, it's only marginally faster and it's like, what's the difference between a 16 minute Benchy and a 14 minute Benchy? Like how much is that actually gonna make a difference in everyday use? Yes, it's faster, but only slightly. And I would consider them all to be pretty much on the same page in terms of speed. I think the Cheaty Tech X Plus 3 has the best software. It's pretty much just stock clipper. You can log into that web interface and control your printer over a web browser. And the touch screen is nice and functional and you can get your stuff done pretty easily there. On Bamboo Lab machines, they're using a lot of proprietary software. You are kind of expected to get on the cloud with this thing and you know register and create an account and all that stuff. Um, you can use it in an offline mode, but you're forced to use a little SD card or you can connect to LAN, but in order to connect to LAN, you have to download an app and create an account. So it's just kind of annoying on this P1S. If you're fine with connecting your printer to the cloud and you don't mind sharing your models with Bamboo Lab, then go ahead and get one of these. It'll probably perform better than anything else on the table here. However, if you wanna be working in a completely offline workflow, then something like this X Max or these K1s will be a better option for you. The downside with the K1s is that Creality's using some version of Clipper that's not exactly stock Clipper. So, you know, that kind of sucks. But other than that, there's not a whole lot of reason to get this Cheaty Tech machine over its competition. I mean, it's slightly faster, it has slightly better software, and it's slightly bigger for the price. For the same price, you can get the P1S or this. It's a little bit bigger, it's a little bit faster, but it's maybe sacrificing build quality a little bit. 
I really like the way that these Bamboo Lab machines are built. They're just really premium feeling. If you're buying an expensive printer, I want it to just feel nice, you know? Just look and feel premium. You definitely get that with the P1S. Plus, if you go with a Bamboo Lab printer, you can upgrade it to using one of these AMS systems. So that's just a really nice upgrade path if you wanna do multicolor printing on one of these things. Overall, it's just kind of an uninspiring middle of the road printer that should be able to get the job done and perform well but it doesn't really stand out in any particular way. It suffers from a lot of the same issues that all of these printers have. There's some glued in place rods that you can't really replace and service yourself. That's one of the big downsides of going with one of these fast Core XY printers is the lack of long-term serviceability. On a typical Ender 3 style printer, you can take those things apart and service them indefinitely. However, these ones, they definitely have a service life. Once some of the bearings go bad, you might have to just throw the printer out and get a new one, unless you're gonna get really creative on how to repair and service those. So out of these four printers, which one would I buy? Well, it really depends on what you need. If you want something that's relatively cheap and just works well, I would probably get the Bamboo Lab P1S. If you want something bigger than the P1S, then I would really consider looking at the Creality K1 Max. That has a significantly larger build volume. This Chidi X Plus is not big enough to really be worth jumping from the P1S up to the X Plus. I'd say the most competitive Chidi machine on the market right now is that X Max, that really large build volume, is basically untouched by anyone else on the market. It's even significantly larger than the K1 Max. It has a print area of 330 by 330. However, given the inefficient packaging and the overall largeness and bulkiness and plasticky feel of this machine, making that even bigger is gonna be just an enormous thing on your desk. I imagine if I had two X Maxes, it would take up my entire desk here, just two giant refrigerator sized units. And when Bamboo Lab comes out with their large printer, that's something that we're definitely gonna have to check out and probably be recommending when it comes around. This is just kind of a middle ground printer where if you really needed something that's just a little bit bigger than this P1S, then you could get it and I'm sure it would work fine for you. But it's less than two centimeters larger uh, in terms of its print volume. So I don't think that's big enough to make an appreciable difference. I mean, this thing prints amazingly and it runs stock clipper, but with this K1 Max, they've got a camera built into it. They got a LiDAR scanner, a larger print volume. It just looks better in general. So, I mean, in terms of this overall marketplace of printers, this one's just kind of like in the middle somewhere and it's competing with the P1S, which is not a good place to be. The P1S is a fantastic printer, especially in terms of price to performance. I wouldn't want to be in that situation. I mean, overall, the machine's a little bit uninspiring. If I were in the market, I'd probably get a P1S. If I wanted something that was bigger than the P1S, I'd probably get the K1 Max. So, I mean, yeah, that's just, we're in an awkward spot with this thing. So, sorry if this video is a little uninspiring, but I'm just feeling a little uninspired by this printer. Uh, I'm sure it'd be a great printer if you want to pick one up. I'll leave links in the description below. I'll also leave links to these other printers. So, you know, check them out. Thanks for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one.